We shall begin our class by defining what is a fish. We shall also learn a few facts about fish. A fish is a cold-blooded vertebrate. What do we mean by a cold-blooded vertebrate? We mean that cold-blooded animals, their temperature is affected by the outside climatic changes. A vertebrate is an animal with a backbone. Let's learn about fish facts. Fact number one is that they live in water. Fact number two is that fish depend on vibrations and motions as a signal, unlike humans and other animals which depend on sights. Fact number three is that we have over 32,000 species of fish. Aquaculture is a process of rearing fish under controlled conditions. Why do we do fish farming? Number one, it's a source of food. It's a source of food for human and animals. What do we mean by a source of food? For one, fish has a high protein content that is used in bodybuilding. It's also a source of omega-3 for brain development and immunity in children. For animal production, it's used to formulate feed formulas for dairy production, pig production, poultry production, and dog foods. Another advantage of fish farming is that it creates employment. In the process of rearing fish, we have people who are employed in the rearing of fish, either in a cage system, a ras system, or a fish pond, which help to boost their livelihoods. Also, it's a source of income for people who do fish value addition. Example, in feed millers and also in food value chains for human consumption. Fishing is also a sporting activity. It brings people together for sports fishing. Food security is one of the goals in the Sustainable Development Goals. Population is globally increasing. The demand of food is also high. Therefore, we have to increase production of fish to contribute in the food basket. Let's learn about the factors affecting fish farming. We have three factors that affect fish farming. One, we have the physical factors, the climatic factors, and the human factors. In the physical factors, we have the topography of the land. In fish farming, we need a relatively flat land to rear fish. Reasons why we will avoid soil erosion in case there are rains. Also, like the dam behind me, we need a relatively flat land for equal distribution of fish in the fish pond. If a dam or a fish pond is inclined, we tend to find that the fish will be accumulated in one area. Also, to reduce the cost of construction. The initial capital might be high if the land is a bit inclined because we need to level up the dam or the fish pond. Another physical factor is the type of soil. In fish farming, we need the type of soil that can easily retain water. The reason why we need a type of soil that retains water is because it reduces the cost of production. If your soil seeps water, it means you have to buy a polythene to control the seepage of water. The third physical factor that affects fish farming is the availability of water. You remember we talked about the facts of fish, that fish live in water. So you cannot do fish farming without water. You can also consider your source of water. Is it in a liver, in a dam or in a borehole? Additionally, water should be fit for aquaculture. Water testing can be done in aquaculture, which we shall later discuss in our course. Let us now discuss about the human factors. Human factor number one affecting fish farming is the availability of labor. Fish farming is relatively intensive. Therefore, you need labor to produce fish. For example, we need qualified labor 
in a hatchery because of the various processes that goes on. Example, we have the broodstock, we have the nursery, we have the outgrower stock. Also, we need labor in fish pond construction and designs. We also need labor in the harvesting stage and also in the value addition stage. Another human factor that affects fish farming is the availability of markets. We cannot rear and harvest fish without a market. Availability of the market is determined by a market research that a farmer or a student needs to do before starting a fish farm. The market research that is usually done determines the consumer preference in terms of the size of the fish and the species of the fish that you're going to rear. Another human factor that affects fish farming is the availability of capital. Fish farming is a capital intensive project as you need money or capital for buying equipment, two, buying feeds, three, paying of employees, four, construction of the fish ponds and fish rearing areas. Another human factor that affects the rearing of fish is availability of transport and preservation of fish. Consumers need fresh fish in the market. You as a farmer, how do you ensure that the fish gets on right time, gets to the consumer at the right time without spoiling? You need to preserve your fish. We have various methods that are used to preserve fish. One, we have icing, we have smoking and drying icing. This is a process by, way, by which you conserve your fish in ice. Secondly, we have a sun drying, where you harvest your fish and leave it in an open surface to dry with the sun. Smoking is another method of fish preservation, where we have smoking machines that are used to provide smoke. We can also leave the fish in an open area and use fire to produce smoke to preserve the fish. We also have salting as a way of fish preservation where you apply salt on the surface of the fish to preserve fish. After preservation of fish, we need to ensure that the fish reach the consumer in the light time at the wanted quality. Therefore, you have different modes of transport. You can use cars or vehicles that have refrigerators or else if you had done the refrigeration yourself, you can use border borders, cars and bikes. For overseas markets, you can use planes that have refrigerating containers. Another human factor that affects fishing is the availability of technology. In the modern society, technology has been increased. Example, in fish farming, we have the recreatory aquaculture system as a methods of fish farming. Technology is used in the hatchery, example, in breeding of the fish. It's also used in the nursery and also used in the outgrowing stock to harvesting. The advantage of technology in fish farming is that it increases production. Example, in a recreatory aquaculture system, we are able to stock 110 fish per meter squared. Well, in a fish pond, it is recommended that we store four, only four fish per meter squared. The last factor that affects fish farming is the climatic conditions of particular areas. Remember students, we said that fish are cold-blooded. However, we can categorize fish into two. Fish that do well in warm climatic conditions and cold climatic conditions. Examples, tilapia do well in warm waters, while salmons do well in cold waters. Let us give a summary of what we've learned in this lesson. We began with the definition of fish. We learned about the facts about fish. We learned why we do fishing and the factors that affect fish farming.
Let us talk about the common terms in fish farming. One, fish. The definition of a fish is that it is a cold-blooded vertebrate. Cold-blooded means that the temperatures of the animal are affected by the outside climatic conditions. Well, a vertebrate is an animal with a backbone. Pond. A pond is a constructed area for the rearing of fish which has the right measurements. Dike. A dike can be defined as the working area surrounding the fish pond. Pegging. What is pegging? Pegging is the activity of using a string and a stick to mark the construction areas in a fish pond. Breeders are the selected male and female fish for breeding. Spawning. Spawning is a process of laying eggs by a mature female fish. A fry is a stage of the fish between the hatching of the eggs and the fingering. Fingering is a fish the size of the fingers. Incubation is a process of placing the eggs in the right conditions for hatching to take place. Acclimatization is a process whereby we regret the temperatures of the eggs in the water and the temperatures in the incubator to ensure that they are the same or at most a difference of two degrees. Hatchery is the place where we receive the eggs, incubate them and rear them until the size of one gram. Stalking. Stalking is a process of introducing the fish in a clean disinfected unit. Broodstock is a selected mature female and male fish for reproduction. Purging is a process of enhancing the taste of the fish by starving it for a given period of time. Stunning. Stunning is a process where we hit the head of the fish with a blunt object to kill it to make it easier to handle the fish during the processing activities. Last but not least, we have gutting. Gutting is a process of removing the intestine from the fish.